Hey fish fam, I'm setting up another 30 gallon today, and uh, I went ahead and grabbed one of these. They're up to 30 gallons quoted on the box. And they're not a terrific design, you know, they're really made to try to make you buy disposable cartridges for $5 over and over and over again. So I thought, you know, it'd be a good time to make something a little more interesting out of this, possibly. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. There's a whole lot of ways that people have come up with trying to make these more efficient. The most common one is, you know, getting a, a coarse aquarium sponge or something and stuffing in there to increase the surface area. But I figured, if I'm going to be changing it around, I might as well do something a little bit more bizarre and go ahead and 3D print some form-fitting material for it. So let's go ahead and do that now. To the computer! It did look pretty dumb. This is what I came up with. And these are modular, so you can print out as many of these as you want to fit any kind of container that you want, resize them just so that the, the width fits. And these, you know, they're pretty simple, not a whole lot to look at here, but because of the texture that a coarse 3D print leaves, this ends up having pretty close to twice the surface area of something like uh, Caldness K1. Now, it isn't fluidized, so it's not quite as efficient because you're not going to get the same kind of contact everywhere. The bottom probably won't get great flow, the top probably won't get great flow. But compared to the cartridge that it comes with, let me go ahead and grab that. So when you buy one of these, they come with this plastic cartridge up in the front, and this little disposable filter floss thing that ends up throwing away most of your bacteria every time you change it out every three weeks or a month or whatever. And if you look at this and the way that it's designed, this is really where your beneficial bacteria are going to grow. On here, and then they've got these little channels here. So I'm going to keep this section for the outflow because why not? But this section here because of the design of these, two of these has about the same surface area as this does. So, I can trash that. And what I'm going to do instead is stack of them to fill up the filter. So this will give me about ten times the surface area of what was originally in here. They fit in pretty snugly. Now, immediately, some of you have probably noticed that this gets rid of a lot of the mechanical filtration and that's really easy to fix for these kinds of things because you're able to get these sponges that just slide over the intake for about a dollar each and this is really nice because you can also throw this away but it's cheaper than the cartridge and it tends to last a lot longer you know you can take this out rinse it out real well and I usually get about three four months out of one of these before I end up having to throw it away so it's about three dollars a year instead of 60 to 120 depending on the cost of your cartridges. Now if you're worried about cleaner water then this will provide. This will give you very clear water. Uh, you can also get, you know, there's this little section over here that's not filled up here. Um, I'm probably going to stuff a little piece of filter floss in there. Go ahead and set this up like that. Good to go. I'm going to go ahead and get this started and we'll see how it works. So I cut just a little bit of uh safe sponge. I'm going to use as a spacer to get this to the right height because if you have these completely underwater a lot of the water will flow over them instead of through them. You can see the basic design on this. I've got some notches that are made in it where the water flows through and it can come out anywhere along the sides. As the resistance builds up going through more will come out when it hits the end here, where there's no place else to go, it will all come out. And there we have a permanent filter. The only maintenance that this will ever need at this point is rinsing out the sponge filter. This will give far more surface area than any other out-of-the-box hob that is on the market. And these things are pretty easy to make. I'm going to put the 
link to the file for these in the description. You know, you can resize them up to whatever size you want, but I like this style. It lets stuff through very easily. They're really easy to clean if they get mucked up, if you end up with a lot of algae or something strange growing in them for some reason, or you want to clean them out for snails. You can just very quickly move them through the water and anything that's in them will get knocked out. But with a sponge pre-filter, these should stay just in absolutely pristine condition. They are a PLA print, which won't last as long as ABS would, but the stuff's a little bit cheaper and it prints a little bit faster. These take about 45 minutes each to make on the printer. Uh, you know, I do batches of four to save time, but I can't really do more than that, so it's about three and a half hours a batch, and then I have to start on the next one. I am going to be giving away two batches of these, along with some sponge filters for conversion kits. If you guys want to leave a comment with just, you know, a statement that you want it, I will be randomly selecting two people and sending these on to them at the, we'll say the 10th of next month, so it'll give people a little bit of time to, to say they want something. Um, you know, if you get picked, you'll just let me know the dimensions of your filter, the width, the length, and the depth, and I'll print out some custom stuff and send it to you where you can either fill it with this directly or you can use it modularly with some sponges or some polyfill or something else. But it's a fun little project. I'll be coming up with some other designs as I go for some fluidized media and stuff like that that you can't really mass produce, that you really have to have some kind of a printer to do. But uh, that's about all I've got for this. It's just an odd little, odd little project. You can see it working here with the water coming out above the water level, so it is forcing through them pretty well. Not the most exciting project in the world, but it's a good use of a 3D printer if you're somebody that's already got one or two or eight. So, uh, you know, thought I'd share that with you. We'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.